Yeah, baby. Hey, Jim. I don't even know how many days it's been. <laughs> um, I was going to do a burnout every day, and the only burnout that's been happening around here is me. Oh, thankfully that cat's off my back. <laughs> don't touch your face. Actually, today, I'm going to be touching my face a lot because I am going to dig out uh, my sewing machine. I have a I have an upholstery type sewing machine that I've had for years and years. Haven't had it out, haven't used it in probably a decade. So hopefully it'll work. And I'm going to try to make uh, some face masks because I think that would be more useful than painting the Z4. Although that would be useful too because then I could have this space Yes, I could move it out. I have to put the wheels and tires back on, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dig out my sewing machine. And when I say dig out, I mean dig out because it is somewhere underneath this pile of stuff. So, boy, crazy shit going on, I'm telling you. It seems like it's just going to go on and on and uh, time goes by in a very strange way. When you can't go outside very much but it is what it is let's make some masks well it sounds like uh they've changed their tune on face masks before when they were saying oh we don't need them i think it was to protect the supply for uh medical professionals but now they're saying anything you wear is better than nothing uh, at least around here. So uh, the bottom of the hierarchy, uh, I mean, the top would be the uh, N95 um, the mask that the professionals use that takes out at least 95% of all particles and viruses and all of that. And the bottom of that hierarchy, uh, just a little bit above uh, better than nothing, would be a bandana. And we've all seen the old cowboy movies, well, most of us have, where the cowboy takes his standard bandana. Now, you want to wash all this stuff before you use it. If you get a brand new one, wash it and sanitize it before you use it at all. That way it'll pre-shrink if it's going to do that. You want to get, uh, these things sometimes have a lot of loose, uh, uh, loose dye. So washing it and rinsing it a few times or even do it in the sink maybe. Um, but just get all the loose dye and everything out of it because you're going to kind of be breathing through it. But the CDC recommends uh, two layers of a cotton uh, or a cotton blend. And the things that I've read say that you should hold it up after doubling it up. And look, and yeah, I can still see a little bit of light through a double up. But like I said, this is not the, the best idea, but it's if that's all you got is a napkin or something along these lines, then you just tie it in the back, just like that, and you're an old cowboy bandit. And you don't have to tongue tie it again once you've tied it, like this one I've got tied. And you can see I can just still pull it over. And I'm good to go. So I don't have to tie it every single time. Um, uh, you should only use these once and, you know, be careful taking them off and on because if you've actually picked up any sort of virus on the outside of this thing, I guess you could get it on your hands and then infect yourself anyway. So be conscious of that. And if you've been out in public, if you've had to go to the grocery store or something and you get home with this, um, when you take it off, be very careful to take it off without rubbing the outside part of it on yourself anywhere and then immediately drop it in uh, the laundry where it will get washed and sanitized and I mean put it right in the, the, the washing machine or put it right in a, uh, the sink with a bunch of suds because you don't want to just throw it in the hamper and let it potentially cross contaminate other stuff so I'm not an expert on this Ugh, duh uh, I'm just trying to I don't know, figure this out as much as everybody else. So 
that's the base model and then let's see what else i've got here i'm thinking about making some out of other fabrics and i've got this one which is a legitimate uh, uh surgical mask it's a paper one a disposable usually it's got a little bit of wire in the top to help shape it around your nose and then it expands here a little bit and so i think i might use this one as a pattern for some fabric ones um it seems like it's a pretty good, uh, I mean, obviously it's a good design. They use it in hospitals, so I was lucky to be able to get that as a sample. And then I have this. Sorry about my bald spot. <laughs> That's why I always wear a hat. Uh, I've got this, which is an actual N95 mask. It's a Harbor Freight one. Um, but I could use this one as a pattern also. And I'm not sure whether it's going to be easier to use these kind of things that go all the way around your head. Or I see some of them have little hooks that go behind your ears. So we're going to try both and then I'm going to try them and see how it works. But this is supposed to be a disposable mask. Like you're only supposed to use it once and then throw it away and then put on a new one. So... I think what I'm going to do here is I might try to just use this one again as sort of a pattern to make fabric ones. Um, it's got a lot of form to it that I won't be able to get with fabric, but it's uh, good enough to get some ideas on sizes and shapes. And then this one is also an N95, but it is uh, folded. So... This might also be really good to use for a pattern. Let's see what kind of strap it has. Yeah, it's got the uh, full-on around-the-head type of strap. But, yeah. You know, I've got to spread the little strappy things out. It's fairly tight. I think that's on purpose. It's supposed to really seal good. And obviously I wouldn't get a very good seal. I'm going to have to shave if I want to get a really good seal. But that looks like a good one to use as a pattern to make a small little fabric thing. Maybe I'd make the fabric tabs come back a little more on the sides here. We'll have to see. And then I've got just your basic dust mask. So I've got a few of these here just to look at them. And this is all stuff I had in around the garage here. I, there haven't been anything available. I was shocked when I was going through all of my upholstery supply stuff. And I found a box that said uh, paint masks and respirators. And I opened it up. And there was a bunch of these in there. Not a bunch. There was, you know, a dozen or so of these in the box. Wow. That's pretty cool. So I must have uh, dropped them in there one day when I was working on a movie that had a hospital set in it. But lucky to have those here. And also I found a bunch of other uh, goodies that's going to make this possible. Let me show you. This is my box of goodies. Uh, got the all-important sewing machine oil. Got two bottles of that. And I found... A bobbin and the bobbin housing, so that's good. And then a pretty big roll of uh, elastic. So this elastic is pretty thick, but I'm thinking once I figure out what the lengths are supposed to be, I'll be able to cut this long ways and make narrower strips out of it. I'll have to experiment and see if that's going to work. If that does work, that'd be great. And if it does not... I have a couple backup plans. I have Velcro, and I have quite a bit of it. So I could make the straps have a little Velcro on them, so you could just kind of pull them around the back of your head, and so it would hold on that way. Or I have this pretty good-sized roll of bungee. It's eighth-inch bungee. There's also this bigger, I think this is what, quarter-inch, three-sixteenths, quarter-inch. And then I've got some good thread, big old thing of thread. And then I thought, uh, I've got this like leather 
stripping, which might be good for a tie. And what else? Let's uh, iron on stuff. So anyway, that's kind of the supply box I'm thinking we're going to use to make these happen. I did pull out my sewing machine. Here it is. So I haven't uncovered it yet to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'll do that right now. Well, there it is. It doesn't look too terrible, although it doesn't look too great either. Nice uh, dead bug on it. Uh, my stand here for the thread doesn't look too great. I'm going to have to hopefully straighten that out. But the belt looks okay. And it looks like, uh, I think if I just clean it up real good and be very careful and oil the hell out of it. Once I get this stuff back here straightened up, I will be able to tilt the whole thing backwards. Anyway, uh, the whole thing lifts up, tilts backwards, and then you can see all the undercarriage stuff. And there's like a an oil reservoir under there I should make sure and fill. But yeah, okay, it doesn't look that bad. Looks like all the goodies are still in there. <laughs> goodies, all the junk. Okay, so hopefully we can make this thing go. And uh, let me clean it up. Well, I've been cleaning the top it off and cleaning off the table and all of that. It had quite a bit of grime on it, but it doesn't look too terrible. This is the machine tip to back. And this is an oil reservoir that should be filled up to this red line. As you can see, it's just got a, a little bit here. It looked in this pan like it's, you know, 10 years of sitting and it's leaked out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that up to where it's supposed to be using this premium. Uh, the bottle is not what is in here. I'm using the actual sewing machine oil that I had uh, in the other bottle and put it in this one to make it easier to use. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to lubricate all the points of uh, where the movement is. And there's lots of them in here. And then on the top, you can see all these holes with red paint on them. Those are also lubrication points. So I have to go through, once the, once the machine is sitting upright again, I'll go through and lubricate all those points and just make sure that everything on this thing is lubed up and ready to go before I plug it in and turn it over. This is, of course, the bobbin. And lift up that tab and it comes right out. I'm going to leave it in there for now because I'm going to want to... Uh, Probably make up a new bobbin, which we do that over here with the black thread I was planning on using. And, uh, I don't know, it's getting kind of late. I'm probably going to call it quits for right now, and I will start this again tomorrow. All right, I'm back. Uh, so now, as of this morning, the mayor of Los Angeles is asking that everyone wear a non-medical mask when they go out in public or to the store or anything. So this is a good timing to be trying to figure out how to make these. So as you'll see, I have finished lubricating this thing. Let me show you under here. I filled up that reservoir so it's at its proper level. I oiled all of the uh, oil spots. A machine like this has got little, little oil pots. Like right there, you can see the top of that has a little opening, and that's to put a drop of oil in. And you'll see one there as well. So I've gone through and I've oiled everything after cleaning it all, and I've run it through a little bit by hand to make sure there's no real binding, and there isn't. The only place I had a problem was in this bobbin, and it had been sitting in there for so long that the thread on this bobbin had gotten saturated with oil apparently and had swollen up and there was one piece of thread that was between this shaft and the inside of the actual bobbin so that made it so it was jammed up and it wouldn't turn so I had to pull all that stuff out but it seems to be cured now and I'm going to turn it on now for the first time in 10 years see what happens 
contact. Okay. Well, sounds pretty good. This light's pretty dull, but it's all right. Now I've set up the bobbin winder here. I've changed over to my black thread and I've threaded it through. There was a thread that was already in here in brown. So all I did was I tied my black one back here to the brown one. And then if you push over, I don't know where the pad went from here, but if you push this over, it lifts up the foot and it also relaxes all of these brakes. That one still looks pretty dirty. Um, so once I had my black thread tied onto the brown thread right here, I relaxed all of this stuff, grabbed the brown thread here and just pulled it through. And then my black thread followed all the way through all this stuff. So I didn't have to figure out how to reroute the thread through all of this. It wouldn't have been that hard to figure out, but it's just, it was an easier way to do it. So now all I really have left is to uh, thread this needle but I'm going to run the machine a little bit first and then this will begin winding my bobbin in black because I'm going to put that in there and see what happens. Okay. Sounds pretty smooth. And my bobbin's collecting. Uh-oh, what happened here? Okay, my thread is supposed to go up and over this thing, and it just popped out of there. And that's no bueno. Put it back up here. So it's hooked up in there. Okay. Try that again. Seems like I've got to push. There's a foot pedal here. Seems like I've got to push it pretty far for it to get going. So might have to adjust that before we get too far into this too. All right. I've been running it through its paces a little bit. I folded over a piece of uh, felt here, uh, fleece and craft felt. And just sewed around a little bit, messed around with the size. You can adjust the size of the stitch right here. And so I've done that. So I think I'm ready to uh, start trying to make face masks. That sticker is from the National Security Agency of the United States of America. It was put on this sewing machine when I was working on an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Oh, wait. No, I was going to say Eraser. But that's not where this one came came from. This one came from a Will Smith movie. Um, Enemy of the State is what I was working on when that sticker ended up on here. I bought this machine brand new in 1994 when I was working on a movie called Tank Girl. And it was in Phoenix, Arizona, or Tucson, Arizona. And I was tasked with building a clear vinyl uh, uh, it was for uh, a surgical tent, and it was for the character Kessley, played by Malcolm McDowell. And they just came up with the idea to put him in a big vinyl uh, surgical tent. It was like a giant clear vinyl teepee, and I had to figure out a way to come up with that. And I decided to rent a sewing machine, and when I went to the sewing machine store, and I was prepared to pay $50 a day or something like that to rent the machine, they had this one that was brand new that I bought for like, gosh, I don't remember exactly. I, I think it was like a thousand bucks, but I, I might be wrong. And, and then I owned it myself and then I rented the machine back to the Tank Girl company. And, and then I've rented this machine to lots of other movies. This machine made lots of uh, stuff in the movies. Like this machine is the machine that made all of the tents and all of the Bedouin tents and all of that crazy stuff for uh, the Rocks movie, Scorpion King. Lots of other movies too. So anyway, I'm going to start working on the masks. So first up, I'm going to take some measurements. So I have to go basically from right about there 
pull that to puff out a little bit. So, mm. something like that. Yeah, maybe six inches. Seven inches wouldn't be bad. Mm. Give me a little space there. Yeah, okay. And then, okay. Just getting some ideas of uh, what is going to happen here. Because I think I'm going to make the fabric thing a little bigger. But you know what? First of all, the first thing I should do is just try to make a fabric version of that pleated surgical mask. So that's going to be probably a lot simpler than the shaped thing with Velcro closures that I've kind of been imagining. So let's try one of those first. Okay, so... Let's see about sizes on this. It looks to be, uh, looks like it's seven inches wide and it's gonna finish at about a little less than four inches, but we'll call it four inches. And then each one of these pleats looks like they add about an inch. Double check here. And so yeah, each pleat adds uh, a half inch twice. So, okay, so instead of four, we'd have five, six, seven. Okay, so conveniently, this would end up being a seven inch by seven inch square to start with. But then I'm going to make it about a seven and a half inch square. Uh, that allows me for some hem allowances on the outside. And I'm going to make these double layer out of a uh, cotton fabric. Uh, or make this first experimental one especially and uh, so let me go cut a couple of uh, seven and a half inch squares all right well I've been making a few various prototypes here and my first one was this guy and it was a little small that was that seven and a half square and then I just popped these little split pieces of this uh, flat elastic on the sides and Originally these were like seven inches and just was too tight on my ears. So the next one I made with an eight inch square piece, which seemed a little bit better size. And then I tried it on with uh, eight inch long straps on the sides. And it was still a little bit tight on my ears. And the sharp edges, they're not sharp, but they're a lot sharper than a bungee cord. So this was not feeling all that great in the... 10 or 15 seconds that I had this on because it was pulling my ears out. But the size of this was pretty good. So then I made this one. Oh, and another problem I found with this one is uh, it seems to work better, or it feels like it would work better if I put these right down at the corners, especially this one was up in the middle. And so then I made this one where instead of laying them on top like I have with these, they're actually between the folds. Um, I actually laid this bungee in when I was originally um, sewing these together because I sew them together nice face to nice face uh, from the uh, inside and then I leave a little spot and then flip it inside out which is then right side up. I don't know if that doesn't really make sense but let's see how this fits. Okay, that's pretty good. It's still kind of a little snug on my ear, but I don't think too bad. And because uh, it's pulling from the bottom corners, it's keeping this bottom kind of tucked up in. And because it's pulling from the top corner, it's kind of keeping the nose part tucked in. And then my pleats open up here to give me some more space. Works pretty good. So eight inch square fabric. And then these uh, eighth inch bungee, eighth inch bungee, yeah, the eighth inch bungee I got, uh, I cut these nine inches long and they seem to fit just about right. So, yeah, I'll make a few of these. Uh, it probably would be better if I uh, was a little more precision. I mean, I'm just kind of hacking and cutting and I'm not pinning anything and I'm just sort of 
pushing it through here. So it'd probably be better if I actually did more precision measurements and instead of just eyeballing the pleats and pressing them in, if I actually, you know, measured them <laughs> and made them consistent and all the same, it would make the end result look a little bit more professional. Not that it will ever look professional because I'm not a professional. <laughs> so, but I'm going to make some more of these, see how it goes. This video is probably long enough, so I'm going to cut it off here and I'll, um, I'll do more if, uh, I think I'm going to try a couple of different designs and try to get one that's more form fitting and that actually goes around to the back of your head with some Velcro. Uh, so it's more of an adjustable size kind of a thing. Um, but I'll do that in another day cause I'm going to make probably, uh, uh, I'm going to make maybe a dozen or so of these uh, pleated ones just so I can uh, give them to a few folks. Like you, Jim, I'm going to bring you a few of them. So I got to get to it. Hey, thanks for watching.